Hello, and welcome to module 12, uh, the module on the group, the online study review guide or OSRG. Um, this is the final module in the group design training series for the version 5.0 handbooks. In this module, I'm going to introduce you to the um, online study review guide um, and uh, describe its functions. Um, before we get started, I just want to mention that um, if you have access to the OSRG, um, and to get access to the OSRG, OSRG you need to be um, a contractor with uh, sufficient clearance. Um, if you have access, you'll be provided with um, a link to the OSRG, and you will also get emails anytime that you are assigned a review task or any task. Um, if you have access to the OSRG, uh, you can go to this search dropdown and look at search resources. And there are a lot of resources here um, that can help you as a reviewer um, reviewing studies, not the least of which is the um, OSRG uh, user guide for um, um, reviewing studies. Uh, this user guide will describe a um, ton of information, uh, everything that's in this video, and, and more. Um, so if you are a new reviewer or even an older, an older, you know, a more experienced reviewer, um, it's it's worth taking a look at the um, at the user guide to make sure that you're just filling everything out in the way that is expected. Okay, so this is what the uh, what the OSRG will look at look like when you log in. It'll take you to the My Tasks field um, where you can see all the studies that you have been um, assigned. Today we're going to be looking at this study, uh, reviewing the study on the Elevate Summer Math Program. So click review to be taken to the screening. Um, before we jump into it, uh, I just want to say that this, um, if you haven't yet read this study, you should go ahead and do that. Uh, it's a high quality study. They report the information we need to, we need to do a review. Um, so you should, before watching the rest of this video, make sure that you've read this study, you understand what happened, and have, have an idea of what you think the, um, the final disposition of this study might be. So if you haven't read the study, go ahead and pause and um, take a look through it. Okay. Um, before And also before we start the screening, I'm just going to mention that um, at the bottom right of most of the pages in the OSRG, you'll see this notes button which you can um, click and um, you'll see that there are fields for um, lots of things that you might um, want to fill out. And really, you know, anything out of the ordinary that you think the review team leadership might need to see, any questions you have about the study, um, any assumptions you're making, uh, you want to provide um, pages where you're getting the source of information that you enter into the study. These are all places where um, you want to you wanna record um, information. Um, and I am going to just describe the study here in the overview. Um, so I have a clear sense of, so I know that I have a clear sense of what's going on. So uh, this study was published in 2015. We examined the effects of the Elevate Summer Math Program on math achievement readiness, students in grade seven from eight school districts. California <clears throat> randomly assigned to the intervention group received access to the program at the beginning of the summer or to a wait list comparison group 
that received access to the program later in the summer. <laughs> math interest and math self-efficacy were also assessed in the study. This review does not include those outcomes because they were not part of an eligible domain. Study review guide, study review protocol. Uh, future ones, I'm probably going to go ahead and copy and paste some pre-written text in here um, just to speed this up. Um, and so you can see this sort of covers a lot of the, um, the information we're going to talk about in the, um, in the screening here. And so this will help me, um, you know, this helps me orient myself towards the study and make sure I understand what's going on. Um, when you're done writing something in the notes, you want to go ahead and hit save, and it'll hide it away. <laughs> All right. So the first question asks about whether or not this is a study, and here you want to answer yes if it's a study and not something like a newspaper article, a blog, or some other publication. Um, the second one asks about whether or not the study is a primary analysis, uh, contains the primary analysis examining the effectiveness of an intervention. Um, and so here you want to say yes if it examines the effect of an intervention, regardless of whether or not you think the study is going to meet standards. The next question asks about whether the study is an eligible design. Um, and this is a randomized control trials. So yes, you'll often receive guidance about um, eligible designs under the uh, in, in italics under the text. Um, and this can occur elsewhere in, in the screening where um, some extra guidance might appear. Um, under a screening question. This is the primary source for the study. Um, was the study published in the time frame relevant to the review protocol? Uh, it was published in the last 20 years. This is the time frame here. So yes. Um, does the study address at least one outcome in a domain relevant to the review protocol? We already discussed that a minute ago um, as I was writing up that little summary. <laughs> does the study examine students in the age or grade range specified in the review protocol? It does. It's, uh, you know, K-12, um, students. Um, does the study meet the requirements for sample characteristics, characteristics specified in the review protocol? Yep, there are students in the United States. Um, does the study occur within a setting specified in the review protocol? Yep, it's an after school program in the United States. Is it a study occur within a geographical area specified in the review protocol? As I've said several times, United States, California. Does the intervention align with the focus of the review? Um, yes, this is a, a um, this is a uh, an intervention that's part of the uh, the intervention of interest. Now, um, this this note right here is incorrect. Um, you you won't see this um, in the version of the OSRG that you're using, um, but uh, bundle bundle interventions are acceptable under five O. Um, in any case, yes, this is an intervention line with the focus of the review. Is the study free of other issues preventing eligibility? Um, so, sort of a generic question, but there's nothing in the study that indicates it's it's got issues that prevent eligibility. So, the answer is yes. Once you've answered yes to all these questions, it'll let you know that the study is eligible. If we answer no to any of these questions, the study would have been ineligible. So, I'm going to hit save and continue here. Go to the next page. Um, now you're going to ask be asked about tags. Tags only come up um, for um, studies that are reviewed as a single as part of a single study review, um, a quick review, a grant review, or some other IES funded study. Um, this is a mathematics intervention, so I'm going to select the STEM and hit save and continue. Um, okay, so now that we've selected tags, it's time to add measures. Measures correspond to um, individual findings in the study. So the first measure we're going to assess 
is going to be um, the score on the um, algebra exam that they use as their um, their outcome, which is the Mathematic, Mathematics Diagnostic, Diagnostic Testing Project Algebra Readiness Score. Once you selected Add Measure, it'll be brought to the Measure screen. Now, when you first add a measure, it's not going to look exactly like this. I had a little mix-up, and so I had to start over. Um, this will be typically be blank, won't have a measure here, and there'll be a, button, a blue button that says um, Select Measure. So if you click on the Select Measure, it'll open up uh, a measure search bar. And you want to do your absolute best to match the um, existing measure in the study to one that's already in the um, in the database, right? This is the mathematics diagnostic testing project, algebra Regi readiness test. You can see that there's this, the overall test, some subtests, and then another outcome that we'll use in a minute, which is the past three or more topic areas. Um, you want to make sure it's in the correct domain. This is an algebra test, and so it is in the algebra domain. Um, it's been used in a different review of this study, so we're going to go ahead and use this domain or use this um, outcome measure. First question you'll be asked is whether or not the measure is overlying with the intervention. Um, and this is the first time we'll see one of these question marks. Question marks, um, you can click on them and they will offer you a little bit of additional information about um, what the question is asking. <laughs> um, Overline measures are measures that are closely aligned or are tailored to the intervention and, and may demonstrate a larger effect size, um, one that's more favorable to the intervention than um, something that's less closely aligned. Um, so we're going to deal with this in a, in a few minutes, but um, for the broad measure of algebra skill, uh, we don't think that this is overlapping the intervention. So we're going to click no. Um, is this measure on the list of independent measures? So you only want to answer this question yes. Um, if you only want to answer this question at all, if the question is on a measure in one of the domains that's marked with an asterisk in the study review protocol, and that indicates that um, the study is in a domain where um, measure independence is of interest. Um, if, you're, if you accidentally click on this and you realize, oh wait, this is not a domain where um, independent measures matter, you can always clear your selection by hitting the X and you can do that on any, any um, of these selection boxes throughout the, um, throughout the OSRG. However, this, this algebra domain is one of those domains where uh, measure independence matters. And so I've already looked this up in the study review protocol. It is an independent measure. I'm going to select yes. Did the analysis control for any endogenous covariates? Um, Endogenous covariates are covariates where um, the uh, that may that may have been collected after the intervention began and are potentially um, affected by intervention assignment. Um, no endogenous covariates were included in the study, so we're going to click um, no. Was the measure collected in the same manner for both the intervention and comparison groups? Um, yes, as far as we know from the study. Um, these were provided in the same way um, as a part of the um, Elevate Summer Math Program to both groups. I'm going to select uh, yes here. You, we've got this endogenous covariates question twice. Um, you shouldn't see that if you're using the OSRG. Um, just a little blip we're having here. I'm going to move right past this question on the second time. So the follow-up period after the conclusion of the intervention. I'm going to put zero days here. Um, this is a little tricky because... The comparison group actually got the exam a little bit later, probably just a few weeks later, um, in the same summer, but um, at the start of a second um, session of the summer program. So the comparison group, as you recall, um, still got Elevate Math, but um, they got it a little bit later in the summer. Um, and their outcome is actually their, their pretest at the start of the, um, the Elevate summer session. Um, so I'm going to make a note of that in the study in the measure notes at the end of this um, page. Uh, 
but I don't think that it constitutes um, a time confound because it, it really is in approximately the same period of time. If you think you've got a time confound, you can always consult with your team leadership and your colleagues to, to double check, but um, we, believe this is, we believe this is sort of close enough um, that there's no confounding factor here. This is a randomized control trial, right? Students were random, randomized to condition. Um, and random assignment was not compromised. You can see there's a little more about um, compromised random assignment. Um, compromises happen when there are, are uh, joiners and cluster level studies. Students join clusters after the interventions already began, and they're included in the analytic sample. Um, sometimes compromise can happen if you've got um, random assignment uh, with different probabilities, and the analysis doesn't count for Assignment, differing assignment probabilities. Um, an ICT can be compromised when the investigator changes the subject group's, subject's group membership after random assignment and includes them in the analysis. Um, and there, there also can be a compromised random assignment if there are exclusions that occur after the um, study begins and that are based on events um, occurring in the, during the intervention that are that are linked to the intervention um, and the reason for the exclusion. Um, the standards handbook has some more details, but none of these have occurred in this study. Um, you could also have um, <clears throat> compromise if um, you've got crossover where students receive um, an intervention, receive the intervention if they were assigned to the comparison group or um, don't receive the intervention if they were assigned to the intervention group. If those students are included in the analysis based on the intervention that they actually the, the condition they actually received, if the authors include them in the condition that they were assigned, which is called an intent to treat analysis, um, that's acceptable. And that actually happened in the study. Some of the students, a few of the students crossed over, um, but the authors included them in their assigned group rather than their um, their received group. And so that's not a compromise. <clears throat> so we're gonna put no. There were no confounding factors in this in the analysis of the, this measure. Um, and the comparison was none. These students, the students in the comparison group did not receive any, um, any other uh, schooling, as far as we know, during this time. <laughs> Does this data represent the full sample? The answer is yes. Um, right, sometimes there are subsamples in studies, right? Um, <clears throat> that represents smaller groups that uh, typically demographic groups, the, the reviewers, the, the authors might be interested in to see if the um, intervention was especially effective, right, for maybe for lower performing students or something along those lines. But this study just focused on this primary um, sample. Is this analysis with cluster level assignment? No. Um, the students were assigned individually to the intervention or comparison group. Um, there were clusters in the study, but these clusters um, were not the mechanism, of, were not part of the mechanism of assignment. Um, there's some more detail here if you want to read about this. If we selected yes, we'd get some extra questions about um, boundaries for both the cluster and the individual level. Um, but we're going to select no and move on. Um, so the next question is should the optimistic boundary be used? Now, under the 5.0 handbook, the cautious boundary is the default boundary. Um, study review teams need to consider whether the cautious or the optimistic boundary is most appropriate. Uh, the optimistic boundary is generally appropriate when we think that um, reasons for leaving the study are probably not linked um, to intervention assignment. Um, so situations where we might be concerned about um, students leaving because of the, the intervention are things like uh, dropout. So if you're, if you're trying to prevent um, students from dropping out of high school, uh, you know, being part of the intervention group might make you less likely to drop out. And so attrition, um, you know, dropping out of the study might be more likely to occur for the comparison group. Um, in those cases, we want to use the cautious boundary. Um, the cautious boundary might also be more appropriate for studies like this one, where um, the uh, 
the intervention is like an out of school intervention. Um, is, is sort of elective, that's outside of regular school hours. The previous re review of this study um, reviewed it under the, cop the, the optimistic boundary. And so we're gonna use the optimistic boundary today just to kind of match the existing review. It's possible that a future review that, that's examined um, an out of school summer program like this one um, or this program might select the cautious boundary, but we're gonna stick with the optimistic boundary today for this study. For this example of this example review of this study. Were any outcome data missing or imputed for individuals in the analytic sample? Yes, we've got some missing data, um, right? The authors excluded anybody from the analytic sample who didn't have um, outcome data. So we need to select yes here. Did the study use an acceptable approach um, to address all missing data in the analytic, analytic sample? And the answer is yes here. The, the WWC believe, um, treats complete case analysis as an acceptable method um, to address missing data in the analytic sample. Next, we're going to talk about, um, oh, this has already been filled because of my snafu earlier, but um, we're going to fill out the um, assigned and then the um, analytic samples. So the assigned sample was 239 students in the intervention group, 238 in the comparison. We had 165 and 184 in the analytic sample, and there were 165 and 184 um, in, the, in the sample with observed outcome data. <clears throat> so there was no um, imputed data in the, um, in, for the outcome data. The next step is baseline measures. Um, we're not going to need this baseline measure, but we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to how to enter it. Um, so, like with the um, with the adding a, a measure to the as an outcome measure, you need to um, first select your um, baseline measure. The baseline measure is the California standards test. And it is in math. As before, um, we want to make sure that we're matching as closely as we can. Doesn't the, the study talks about sixth grade. Um, they took the general mathematics. So we got general math. Let's tie, let's add general in here. CST, general. What are our options? Oh, we've got a lot of options here. This um, this math, let's see, we want something in the general mathematics achievement domain. I think I saw one. Here we go, this general math, um, outcome is in, is in the general mathematics achievement. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit select for this one. <clears throat> is this required for baseline equivalence or um, outcome imputation bias? Uh, <clears throat> so um, we're going to put not required here. Now, um, if the study is going to have high attrition, um, excuse me, and um, and baseline equivalence calculations will be re required. Um, you will need to, um, well, you'll want to select that, but we know, I know sort of know already that um, it's not going to be required. 
Um, moving on, was the baseline characteristic measured in the same units as the outcome? Um, no, this is actually a different test, so it's not the same units. Or any baseline data used in, to, uh, imputed to estimate the finding. The answer here is yes, actually. So they used that. Um, they used um, uh, the dummy, the um, the dummy code for missing this for some of the imputed baseline data, um, and um, we'll need to account for that. So for this part, we know that um, there were 165 intervention group, uh, or no, take that back. For this section, there was a smaller set of students. So on page A5, A5, there's a table that talks about the pre-intervention sample sizes and characteristics for the analytic sample. Um, and there were 164 um, students in that, in the intervention group and 181 in the comparison group that have baseline equivalence data. But, but there's still the 165 and 100, 184, yeah, students that had observed baseline data and the 164 and 181 students all had um, observed baseline and outcome data. I'm gonna enter the baseline mean. 339.93 and 333.2. This was not reported. Oh, I did this wrong. This is also the same one. These are all the same thing. And the standard deviation was 38.09 and 29.6. And these are the same values up from up here. Does the analysis suggest for this baseline measure at the individual level? The answer is yes. And it was regression, it was an ANCOVA adjustment. They didn't report the um, correlation, which doesn't matter for this, um, <clears throat> for this, uh, for the regression and COVA adjustment. Um, and they reported the, um, unadjusted mean standard deviation for this one. Save and continue, and we move on. So we're going to um, move on to effect size computation. Um, for this, we've got ANCOVA adjusted post-test values. Um, the study doesn't report the um, proportion of variance explained. That's okay. Oh. I just realized I didn't I didn't um, add any study notes. I know those will have to go at the end. Okay, so back to the ENCO adjusted post test. So um, we've got the um, <clears throat> ENCO adjusted values are on page. Um, See. 
AJ6. So the intervention group had a score of an average score of 20.81, and the control group had an, an average intervention score of 16.8. The standard deviations were 6.63 and 5.92. <clears throat> this question asks if a negative result indicates a favorable outcome. Um, in cases like where the outcome is uh, a dropout, where you're trying to reduce the value of the outcome, you want lower dropout, um, this question is going to be yes. But here today, we're going to answer no because an increase in the algebra test score is the desired. Um, the desired value. The authors um, do report effect sizes. Um, they report it on. Page nine. So that's uh, 0 0.68. <clears throat> we don't want to use this in place of the calculated value. And the reason for that is that the authors don't calculate, don't estimate the effect size the same way that the WWAC does. They estimate the effect size by dividing the unstandardized, um, <clears throat> the unstandardized intervention effect by the comparison group standard deviation rather than the pooled standard deviation. So we're going to select no here. Um, they did not provide a standard error for the effect size, so we can leave this blank. They provided a p-value of less than 0. 0.001, so we're just going to put 0. 0.000. We'll make a note um, of what the authors reported later, and we can use this in place of the um, calculated value. Finding a significant. Okay, so we want to we want to note a number of things in this measure. So. Um, we want to note that the authors used a missing data indicator method to account for missing data in the baseline measure. Um, the assigned samples were found in the text on page A2. The anal analytic samples are found in the text on page A3. The baseline mean standard deviation and standard deviations were drawn from table A2 on page A4, and sample sizes for the baseline measure were found in table A4, um, which was on page. A5. I know the authors calculated the effect sizes um, by dividing the effect size estimates um, by the comparison group standard deviation. So it's not clear if they, and it's also not clear if they performed any sort of small sample correction. Um, and I also talk about the post test being immediate for the intervention group. Um, the comparison group outcomes are from the first day of the second session the summer program prior to receiving the introduction. Um, they're probably no more than a few weeks apart during the summer. Um, and then the Table, it was the table two on page nine. That's where I got the values for the um, um, the rest of this information. Save and continue. Okay, so I, I hit um, save and continue and the, the measure field, but I realized I made a small error. Um, and if you make an error, you can always go back and fix it. So I'm gonna click edit and then scroll all the way to the bottom. This study reported p-value should actually be 0.001. So anytime the authors report uh, that the value is less than something, so if it's less than 0.05, you want to put 0.05. If 
it's less than 0.01, you want to put 0.01. And if it's less than 0.001, as it says in the study, you want to put 0.001. Um, and uh, just to say a little more about this section, um, we generally don't use the um, study reported value for the effect size. You prefer to report our own effect sizes. Um, we only use the study reported effect sizes under um, a small number of cases. And you can, if you want to see more about that, you can look at the um, handbook, um, but we will frequently use the study reported p-value. We don't use the study reported p-value um, if there's an if the if the authors don't report it. Obviously, we can't. Or if there's a known problem with the study calculation. So, um, for instance, if uh, the um, study requires baseline equivalence to be um, to be demonstrated, and it's in the adjustable range, and the analysis. Um, Includes uh, or the and the author's analysis does not include um, the the baseline equivalence covariate. We don't want to use their p value, but in this case, um, it's not required, and they you, they do include it actually. So we you know we can use their um, their p value because they include all the same um, adjustments that we would anyway. Um, the other case we would want to use this is if uh, the authors don't account for clustering. Um, and there's a mismatch between the unit of assignment and the unit of analysis. But here it's an individual assignment study. There are no concerns about that. So we're going to click save and continue. Uh, when you arrive at save and continue, you need to go ahead and select main finding. This is a main finding from the full sample. Um, got a few more measures we want to we want to add. So we're back at this page again. Um, the other main finding that we're interested in today is going to be um, algebra readiness, which is the percent passing at least three of the seven topic areas. Um, and this is based on the mathematics <clears throat> diagnostic test again. So we've got this pass three or more topic areas. We're going to hit select. I'm going to move pretty rapidly through this because these, these answers are all going to be the same as the last time. So it's not a rule with the intervention. It is uh, on the list of independent measures. We didn't account for endogenous covariates, collected in the same manner. Um, zero days follow up. It's a randomized control trial. Um, random assignment was not compromised. There are no confounding factors, no comparison. It's the full sample. Um, there's no cluster level assignment. We're using the optimistic attrition boundary. They were missing outcome data and they used an acceptable approach. <clears throat> Students again. Uh, we've got 165, 184. Um, oh, sorry, 239, 238, 165, and 184. And all the students had observed, all the students in the analytic sample had observed outcome data. We're now at a baseline measure. Um, it is not required. Oops, got to find the, the measure first. So the California standards test in the general mathematics achievement category. Is general math. We're going to select that one. Baseline equivalence is not required. <clears throat> we don't need to um, uh, do anything about um, outcome invitation bias, right? Because remember, there's no missing data in the outcome. There's just a little bit of missing data in the baseline. Um, so baseline characteristics were not measured in the same means as the outcome. There was a little bit of imputation. Um, <clears throat> And uh, was there missing was there missing baseline data for the sample that was not included? It was not imputed. The answer is no. So we've got this one. Let's see, one sixty four and one eighty one. Students had we um, used to assess baseline equivalence. Um, we had one hundred and sixty four students with observed baseline data. 181. And then, so these are again, these are all the same thing. Um, 340.06. 
see the intervention mean for all three of these groups, and 336.68 for all three of these groups. Standard deviations are 39.07 and 32.11. <clears throat> And then this folks out. Did the analysis suggest for the baseline measure the individual level? Yes. Regression and COVA don't enter the, don't enter the ba uh, baseline measure, and we're going to use the unadjusted mean standard deviations. Save and continue. You don't want to care that it demonstrates equivalence because we know it's going to be a low attrition RCT. Here we got to select dichotomous. And these are results from a logistic regression. We're going to go ahead and enter um, 29, 12. And then a negative result does not indicate a favorable outcome. Just like no. Once again, the authors um, did calculate an effect size. <clears throat> which we will not be using. They did calculate a p-value, which again was less than 0 0.001, so under 0 0.001, we'll use their p-value, and it was significant. Um, and we're going to include all the same information. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enter some, um, some topic area outcomes. Um, these are gonna be um, overlined with the intervention, right? So as you, if, you, if you look in the, um, whoops, in the text of the study, um, the authors mention that um, elevated math has more four main components. Um, which is that there are four math content modules, properties and operations, linear equations, ratios and multiple representations, and transformational geometry. Um, and these uh, these correspond to um, uh, the <clears throat> sub or the the um, subscale outcomes that the authors reported on. And so this so these subscales are. Um, closely aligned to the intervention content. There's reason to believe that um, it might be more um, favorable for uh, students in the um, in the intervention group. So go ahead and click and add a new outcome. Select a measure. It's another mathematics. <clears throat> So the first one is decimals, their operations, and percent score. Select that. Measures overline with the intervention. Um, and we know this is going to uh, receive um, a rating that does not meet standards. So a lot of this stuff um, probably don't need to enter. Let's see. Just fill as much as is required. Two thirty nine, two thirty eight, one sixty five, and one one sixty five, and one eighty four. And then we're going to, I'm just going to add a little note here about. The fact that this was overlapped with the intervention and sort of where I, where the pages where I drew that conclusion from. <clears throat> Let's 
let's see. Uh, let's see. Yes. Anywhere else? No, no. I mean, it's other be a supplemental finding because it's a subscale. And we're going to do that for the other outcomes. So the next finding was based on literals and equation scores, diagnostic mathematics, other mathematics, diagnostic. Literals and equations, gonna select that one. Yes, it was over aligned. Um, <clears throat> left in the same manner, zero days. Randomized control trial, there were no confounding factors. Um, random assignment was not compromised. There's no comparison group. It's the full sample. Two thirty nine, two thirty eight, sixty five, one eighty four, and I'm going to put that note in again. <laughs> All right, one last measure. Geom geometric measurement and coordinate geometry score. <clears throat> it was overlined the intervention. It was collected in the same manner. Zero days. It's organized control trial. It's not compromised. Family factors. There's no comparison. Uh, the comparison group doesn't didn't receive anything. It's the full sample. And 239, yes, okay. 239, 238, 165, 184. <laughs> and add our note one last time. Okay, so at this point, um, you will sometimes need to aggregate findings. You only need to use the aggregate findings button um, if you're trying to aggregate. Uh, if you're trying to aggregate findings for um, for um, two or more subsamples, like boys and girls, to create a new finding, um, if the author didn't pr provide the full sample finding. Um, the aggregation of multiple main findings in a domain occurs automatically. Um, it assumes a correlation of one between findings, and uh, which is what the WWC does unless the authors report correlations between findings. And um, the authors didn't report any correlations between findings here. Um, you can override this automatic aggregation if you need to. I'm not going to discuss it here today. It's part of the um, OSRG manual if you're in a position where you need to override the default. Um, so now we've um, selected, we've entered all the measures that we are going to review today. And so we can go ahead and hit save and continue. Um, so this, um, this study includes students from um, several schools. So I'm going to select multi-site here. All right, when you arrive at the preliminary review results page, um, it provides a preliminary rating <clears throat> for the study um, and for the findings. Um, and a summary by outcome domain will appear at the top. And then you'll they will have some information about each um, finding grouped by domain. <clears throat> Any adjustments that are performed by the OSRG will be noted with a footnote. 
you should go ahead and confirm the, confirm that the rating is correct and the disposition accurately describes the reason for the rating. And so we can see here um, at the top, right, this meets WWC standards without reservations because it, a, is it, it is a randomized controlled trial to low attrition. That's correct. <clears throat> um, the information summarized on this page matches the information reported in the study. Um, these are the correct values here. Matches what's in the study. You can see the sample sizes are correct as well. And then the adjustments by the OSRG are appropriate. We can see that it's um, it uses the ENCOVA adjusted post calculation, which is what we want. Um, and the p value is um, we've used the study reported p value here. And then we can sort of scroll down and see, okay, this is the other one. This is all, it all looks correct as well. We've entered sort of about as much information as we had to for this, these three um, over-aligned interventions that got does not meet standards. The information is all correct. And we have our study note at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna click save and continue. Once you've uh, verified that the preliminary rating is correct, everything looks good, you're gonna arrive at the context fields. Um, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add um, this report information about the main analytic sample size and the unit of analysis. Um, if there is more than one finding, there's a, a, a sort of prioritization scheme for um, what to enter into this field. Um, that's in the user guide, but this only has one main finding. So it's just going to add the overall sample size. These students were all seventh graders. Um, now for this demographic information and a lot of what follows, the authors didn't report information about the analytic sample. They reported primarily on the um, average demographic information from the school districts where these students were recruited from. Uh, and they report on the gender of the students in the assigned rather than the analytic sample. So I'm just going to add a note in the notes field, um, outlining that. I'm also going to have a little note about the page where I got the um, information about the contextual variables. Okay, so I'm looking at the study on page A2. Sorry, A1. Um, we can see that there were 34% um, Asian, 2% Black, nothing is reported about American Indian, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander. 9% of students are um, white. And so you can see these are currently outlined in red. And if I try and leave, it's going to let me know that these need to report to 100%. Um, there's also an out-reported box. We don't want to check that because we've got some information about the race of the students. So instead, I'm going to um, add up the... Um, the total of the student, the total number of, or the total demographics that I've reported so far. So 34 plus two plus nine is 45. So 55% are other or unknown. And you can see now all the boxes, the boxes are stopped being red. So we can move on. See 52% are Hispanic or Latino. So 48 are not Hispanic or Latino. Sample is, the assigned sample is 56% male and 44% female. On average, there were 38% 30, of students were English language learners, which means that 62, no. Yeah, 62% were not ELs, ELLs. Um, <clears throat> nothing was reported about individual in, about special education or IEPs. Nothing was reported about 504 plans. Disability was not reported. Um, 
for your reduced price lunch, 57% on average, which means 43% or not. No information is reported about Pell Grant eligibility. Um, class type is going to be um, This is a general curriculum, not a special education curriculum, and it is sort of a classroom. So we're going to go ahead and enter general education here. Um, the schools were public schools. The authors report that it's suburban. Um, there's some more information about this in the um, the um, the user guide about how these are what what the definitions of these are. But in general, uh, if the authors report <clears throat> that that's from rural, suburban, urban, you can um, you can select what's in the study. Um, you you might only need to look at the definitions of these if it's not clear from the study which of these is most appropriate. Here for region and state, um, the authors report that it's in California, and you can see that all of these states are under a region, and so we're also going to select the West region because. It took place in the West region in California. Um, and we also know that this was part of the rail West. So good, so it's a good, good signal that it's in the West region. Um, the summer program doesn't describe a lot of information about how it's delivered based on the information in the study. So there were instructional modules delivered by um, credentialed teachers. It seems like they're delivered as a class. The intervention type is going to be practices are discrete. They're defined activities. Um, products are usually branded or commercial interventions. These are curriculum or software. Um, Policies are an education policy, a set of guidelines or rules or plans that are used as the basis of making decisions. This is going to be a product, right? It's a, it's a produced by a group. They provide the classroom and supplement material um, and enrichment, and it's supported by the developers. It is a, an out-of-school supplemental, and the primary target is students. Save and continue. So these narrative fields are, are pretty important. Um, you want to use complete sentences here that are succinct and easy to understand. Um, you can add note, notes if you need to. Um, these forms, these fields are part of will be part of an initial draft of any intervention report. Um, and they'll they will end up being the source of text on the studies page in the WWC website. Now this is unlikely to be, if you're if you're part of an intervention report, this will probably not be um, the final um, text because you need you'll have to make a system of the intervention report, um, which the which will be um, facilitated by the review team leadership. But you want to get as close to the final text as you can. For today, I'm going to focus on using the text um, that uh, was is already part of the. Um, the study page, right? So these were took, so took place across eight middle schools and six districts located in California. The schools were located in suburban communities and the students attended summer school program of their normal or nearby campus, right? So we've talked about location, the types of classrooms and the school. Describe the studies to design. Well, I actually did that earlier in my notes. And so um, go ahead and grab the, what I used before. So these are, we've got details from the um, samples. So we got, so this information came from A1. So from the summary. Um, initial front matter. This came from A1 and A2. Oh, 
Oops, I about this over here. Randomized sample included 177 students, 239 scientific intervention group, and 238 assigned to that control group. <clears throat> The analytics sample did 165 students in the intervention group and 184 students in the comparison group. Prevention group is in the study. Um, this is described in uh, page two through four. Um, you know, recall the comparison group didn't didn't get anything. Didn't have any other. Um, instruction. They got they got they got the program after the um, intervention group had already received the program, and that's in on page seven. Let's, let's see. And it all comes from page three um, in box one. All right, hit save. So if I think I'm actually done, I can hit complete. But if you hit complete, you can't go back and uh, fix anything. This will signal to your coordinator that you're, the review is ready for reconciliation. So before you do that, you know if there's anything you're still not sure about, you think you need to ask any questions about, um, you can hit save, and you can always come back and, and fix that. Um, so before... We wrap up. I just want to once again note that we didn't cover every single part of the study review guide today. We just sort of um, show, showed the main pieces of the study review guide that you might use in the process of um, reviewing a study. All of the components of the study review guide, everything we talked about in this video, um, you can find in the um, on the the resources page in the user guide. Um, so if you're ever confused, you're not sure you're doing, you're, you're entering all the right information, you don't know how to um, proceed, uh, you can look at the, the, the user guide because it's very complete. So we've arrived at the end of module 12, the final module in the group design standards training for the 5.0 handbooks. Um, if you want to become uh, a certified reviewer, you can uh, proceed to the um, group design and certification exam at this at this time. Um, the link to the certification exam can be found on any of the home pages for any of the training module for any of the training series and also on the overall um, training page. Uh, there will be a pretest, a shorter pretest um, that experienced reviewers or individuals who are well well prepared should be able to pass. And if you don't pass, uh, you'll be offered four longer um, certification exam, up to, up to four opportunities to pass longer certification exams. Uh, more information about the certification exams is available on the certification exam site. Thank you for listening and good luck on your on your exam.